just starting uh, two days ago, Andy, you know, we gave out 4,000 meals to our, our guys and their families in the community. So this is not some theoretical issue. This is hitting, um, sitting, our, sitting our home, sitting our people. It's been a couple of weeks now from the initial shock of schools closing across the country to people coming to terms with what this is going to mean, at least in the near term. Uh, what are you seeing? What makes you hopeful? And what are you concerned about? When I led the Chicago Public Schools for seven and a half years, we never missed a single day of school. We never had a snow day. We never had a teacher strike. And I took great pride in that. So I don't love the idea of schools being closed, but we had to close them as a country. And yes, education is important, but this is about saving lives first. Um, but I've been unbelievably inspired by the leadership I see at the state and local level. And I'm talking to superintendents on weekly calls. I'm doing a ton of work around food distribution and schools aren't just academic places of academic learning. Schools are social safety nets. Um, they're doing an amazing job of, of uh, feeding tens of millions of children and family members and community members every single day. Um, so I'm hopeful, but there's so much work to do. We have to continue to work together and to see people, you know, take risks, learn, feel fast, support each other. It's a, it's a brutal time. Obviously, Andy, I definitely wish you weren't here, but, uh, but honestly, I've been really inspired. I've been really inspired. So you painted a rosy picture, but is there stuff that's concerning you there? I'm here in Chicago, in my hometown, in my hometown Andy. Um, African Americans are dying at six times the rate of, of white people. And anytime you have a, a financial crisis, poor, marginalized, disadvantaged communities get hit the hardest. Anytime you have a healthcare crisis, those communities get hit the hardest. Anytime you have an educational disruption, those communities get hit the hardest. And so what we're seeing across the country is absolutely heartbreaking. Um, but I hate to say it, it's not surprising at all. And those who are the most vulnerable always, always, always take the biggest hit when we have tough times like this. I don't want to call it a positive, but the only good thing that I hope comes out of this is those massive inequities, inequalities are slapping us in the face right now. We can't hide behind them. Can we as a society start to take on these huge challenges? What are your thoughts on sort of summer and then um, more generally the things that schools need to be doing over the next three to six months to help meet this challenge? If it is safe to reopen physical school buildings, I would love to see a massive summer school, maybe even mandatory summer school for kids across the country to give them the chance to, to as you said, make up for some of the learning loss to give uh, parents a chance to try and you know, get back to work and get back on their feet, to get teachers working again. Um, I think that would be, be fantastic. If that's not possible physically, then how we continue to get better in this virtual you know, environment is so, is so crucially important. And I think Andy, again, just as I said, as, as a country, as a society, I don't want us to go back to the old normal in education. I don't want us to go back to the old normal. And there's a whole bunch of things that this time allows us to to think and to challenge. Um, can we think about the fundamental school year and calendar year? Can we think uh, seriously about not seat time, but about competency? Um, can we think about what should truly continue to be online and learn virtually? And what should be done in, um, you know, in, a, in a physical building? We saw back in, in 2008, 2009, was a tough economy when states made cuts to budgets. Poor schools got hit much harder than the wealthy school districts. That's a real challenge. That can't happen again. Um, we will see, unfortunately, because of so many, uh, you know, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of families, parents losing jobs, um, we're going to see a huge increase in Title I funding across the country. Can we re-envision and reimagine what children coming from very tough uh, situations need? And then last thing I'm throwing a lot out there is this, this whole idea of uh, meeting kids' social and emotional needs first. There are a whole bunch of, as you know, vulnerable kids, you know, whether it's from a healthcare standpoint or the emotional standpoint or from a food insecurity standpoint, who are hurting before this. And now those numbers have gone through the roof. And there's a whole lot of kids where things were pretty okay, were pretty stable, and their world has just been turned upside down. And I'm talking to, to school superintendents who are doing great things now around you know, telehealth and counselors and psychologists and social workers reaching out to students, you know, FaceTiming, texting, whatever it might be. But we have to be thinking about all of these things and thinking about all of them concurrently.
what does the education field need to do going forward to make sure that in what seems like inevitable future stimulus bills, uh, there's more support for education? But when we did our uh, Recovery Act in 2009, that was about $800 billion. In education, we got 100 of that $800 billion. Uh, you know, a huge investment. In the stimulus of what we've seen so far today, that was you know, $2.2 .2 trillion, so more than twice, uh, almost three times. Um, what we had act, what what happened uh, in the past before, I think only about 20, 20 billion <laughs> went into education. So uh, the, the only conclusion you can draw is that education simply is much less important to the current administration than it was to ours. If you had your experience during the last downturn to do over, what are some things um, that you've learned you do differently, some advice you would offer? What we see is as bad as that time was and as scary as that was, this time is, is worse. And how do we help families who have been okay, who have sort of made it, maybe made it paycheck to paycheck that they were making it, and now that is gone. And their, their world is just literally turned upside down in the past two, three weeks. Um, we have to think very differently about how we support kids and families. And so again, the, the feeding piece of this is so hugely important. The, the, uh, the emotional support is so hugely important. And for me, those things are the foundational pieces. And if those are tight, then we should be talking about the academic rigor and doing some fantastic things to help students you know, prepare, not just to graduate from high school, but to go on to college. But we have to build that base and strengthen that base in a way that, that we never had to before and take it with a, a seriousness of, of purpose. And, um, I just, it, it, again, it's so, it's so unfortunate that right now I don't see any, any sort of interest in those ideas. Thanks so much. Stay safe. Thanks for what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Stay safe.